Hi, my name is Robert. And I'm Aaron, and we're with Galfer Braking Systems. And right now, we're going to show you how to change pads. Um, so, removing the caliper, taking the pad, old pads out, we're going to throw a new set of pads in and reinstall the calipers. All calipers are different uh, depending on which model you have. So, um, this particular setup may not apply just to you, but there will probably be some small tweaks to get your bike ready. So, we're going to start by taking off uh, the right side caliper and show you how it's done. All right, and now you can remove the caliper. Be as gentle as you can so that you don't bang your fingers or the wheel too much. Now with this particular caliper, it has two clips here that you're going to need to remove before you can remove the pin and the brake pads. Got it. Do you see that? <laughs> they don't pay me enough. <laughs> Oops, that one I did not catch. Okay, now that, <laughs> now that the clips are out, you can pull the pin straight out. And then the brake pads should just drop. Or you can pull them out through the top, whichever you like. Okay, so uh, we've got our new set of brake pads. Uh, what we've done is we've cleaned the, the inside from any uh, brake dust. You want to always clean the inside of your caliper. We also recommend you using maybe some Scotch-Brite to, to resurface the pins and the, and the clips. So we're going to do the install. So you can put the brake pads back in, either through the bottom or the top, whichever you prefer. Slide them back in. You've got your pins, and then once you got both pins in, we have the R clips going back into this caliper. All right, and now that our clips are in, we can reinstall the caliper. Um, we do recommend that with you using a new set of pads, you're going to want to push the pistons back into the caliper while you have it out. That way there's enough clearance for the thicker, newer pad when putting it back onto the rotor. And so once the caliper's back on the rotor, you're going to reinstall the bolts. You want to true the calipers and the wheel so that everything lines up straight. So what we've done is, with the wheel back on, axle's still a little bit loose, pinch bolts are a little bit loose, and the caliper bolts are all a little bit loose. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pump your lever a few times, build up pressure so that your brake pads are grabbing on your rotor. And with pressure held onto it, you're going to want to tighten up your caliper bolts. Keep in mind, this is maintaining pressure so that the brake pads stay in place. Tighten them up on both sides. This may help if you have a buddy around to hold the lever while you go back and forth across the bike. Now the caliper bolts, you want to move to the pinch bolts. Just make sure that those are all tight. Again, both sides. And then you can lastly go to your axle bolt. Uh, when installing the calipers, you are going to want to refer to your owner's manual for torque specifications. Make sure that you do have it torqued down to the recommended uh, tightness. Um, and lastly, you know, you did just install a, a new thicker pad. So once again, you're going to want to check the fluid in the reservoir. Make sure that by pushing those pistons out, you haven't pumped too much fluid back up in the reservoir and you still have some, some clearance room. So uh, once you've done that, you're ready to ride. Um, the recommended break-in period for the brake pads, we do recommend uh, 50 to 100 miles of easy break-in, so don't get really heavy on the brakes right off the bat. You know, take it pretty easy, normal street commuting, riding, you know, um, take it easy and you'll be good.